It's the internet. You're busy. Let's do this. I'm Jeff Grubb. I write for gamesbeat.com. This is the Steam Deck interface, and this is a guide to setting up emulation on the Steam Deck. You can see here, I have uh, emulators like Dolphin Emulator for GameCube, RPC S3 for PlayStation 3, uh, Duck Station for PS1. We're going to go through those three at least in this video, uh, how to get them set up, uh, where to get them from, all that stuff. The good news is, for the most part, you won't need anything except for the Steam Deck. Now, if you have another computer, that'll help. Uh, if you have a smartphone, that could help as well. Uh, but if you only want to be doing stuff through the Steam Deck, uh, there is a way to do that. Uh, you'll probably want to start by going to this non-Steam tab here at the top. You see, if you go to Library, and then you scroll over to non-Steam, it'll prompt you to say, hey, download Google Chrome. This will enable you, en enable you to go to something like OneDrive or drive.google.com or Dropbox. And if you have all your ROMs in a folder right there, you can quickly grab them from there and put them on your system. But where you really want to start is in something called desktop mode. To get to desktop mode, hit the Steam button, go to power, and you click switch to desktop. We're going to do that right now. This is desktop mode, and this is just a Linux desktop-based operating system. It's uh, called KDE Plasma. The good thing about KDE Plasma is you have this Discover Store. Now, I have my Steam Deck plugged into a dock, and I have a keyboard and mouse plugged in. Uh, that makes things pretty easy. Makes it pretty easy to, to navigate. Now, again, you don't need these things, but if you don't have a keyboard plugged in, you'll have to go and get one from this Discover Store. We'll start there. I'm actually going to, let's update everything first. Okay, so you go to Applications, and then if you go to... Actually, no, it's right here in Accessibility, Core Keyboard. You'll click this button right over here. It'll say Install. This enables you to bring up a virtual keyboard. Uh, then once you have that, you'll click the Start button. And again, you don't need the keyboard yet, uh, a physical keyboard. Uh, you'll go down to, I believe, Utilities, and you'll find it right there. This brings up a virtual keyboard. Now, it's a little bit wonky, uh, but uh, it'll stay up until you tell it to go down. And then when you want it to go down, there's a button right here. You click this. This will hide it. And then to bring it back, you're going to have to click this button here, the, the, the capital A, the lowercase a. It says Core Keyboard. You click that, and it brings it back up. Uh, we're going to hide it for now. We're not going to be using this very much because I have a keyboard right here. But that is if you want to do everything on the Steam Deck. That is an option available to you. I do believe Valve plans to add its own Steam keyboard uh, and make it workable in the Linux desktop environment. I believe that's something they're testing, and it should come very soon. So... While we're in Discover, this is key as well. This is where you're going to get most of your emulators. Now, you can do a lot of emulation through RetroArch, which is built into Steam, but that's only good for a certain level of games. RetroArch cores are okay. They're not great. Uh, if you want the real deal Dolphin, for example, and really, I don't think they even have a GameCube core in uh, inside of uh, RetroArch at all, you'll want to come here, Discover Store. Then you'll go to Games, and then you will go to emulators and then you can find everything here. Now I've already downloaded most of them, but you can see Dolphin emulator, you just add that. You can add another version of RetroArch, like a, the real full deal version of RetroArch. Uh, this is probably a pretty good idea to add this instead of using the one in Steam because this one has support for a lot more cores and you can download them directly from RetroArch instead of having to go through the DLC store on, on Steam. Uh, you get Zemu for Xbox. Duck Station is a much better emulator for PlayStation than uh, the, the core that is in RetroArch. So go ahead and grab whichever ones you need. And now you have them. And now they're on your system, right? Well, it's, it's you, you shouldn't stop here. You can now, of course, go to your start menu and find these things. Go to games. Oh, here they are. And boot them up here. Um, and a, a very important thing to keep in mind is that the, the, the desktop mode is great for running this stuff up to a certain point but all of these things should run even faster in game mode, which is the Steam OS, the Steam OS proper. So how do you access these things through Steam OS? Well, that's pretty simple. We're gonna close the Discover Store, we're gonna minimize it, we're gonna open up Steam. And this is Steam in the desktop interface. And you see this little plus button right here? Let's go ahead and bring it right here in the middle. You see the plus button right here, you click Add Game, Add a non-Steam game. And now it gives you a list of all the apps on your system if for some reason something doesn't show up, go ahead and hit this browse button. But I've added all of my emulators. I've even added stuff like Discord, which can run in the background while you're playing another app. 
it is uh, in the steam os version so i was able to talk to someone on discord so definitely this is a very powerful utility for the steam deck and getting the most out of the steam deck so add your uh, your emulators one thing to keep in mind there is an app here called dolphin this is a file manager app uh, it is separate from the dolphin emulator so make sure when you're clicking on the dolphin that you want to add it has the little dolphin icon next to it uh, you won't see them here because i've already added all of mine but you can go through here and you should be good actually i'm going to add arc as well arc is an important tool which we will talk about next okay so i've added that uh what is arc arc is another thing you might want to go ahead and grab from here it, once you have the keyboard uh you'll want to just start start typing these things in so i'm gonna type in a r k hit enter it is arc and it's an accessories it's an archiving tool add this this enables you to unzip files whether they're in seven zip or a zip a zip format and that means so if you download games from wherever on the internet if you uh if you have a repository of your own and for some reason you zip them all up well this can unzip them and you could do that right here in the desktop now 7-zip is pretty compressed so it takes a long time but it, it will work it's not actually that much longer than if you were to unzip it on a full-fledged desktop computer okay so what we've done so far is we've gotten the virtual keyboard we've gotten arc we've downloaded some emulators and we've set them up so that they will work in in the steam os gaming mode but that's not the end of it what you're going to want to do now is get your games and you have a couple of options here the simplest option is to plug in a hard drive or a usb stick you might be you might want to use the sd card that you plug into your steam deck you might want to do that but keep in mind that if you do that you will need a linux based system uh, manager and on windows those things exist so you can get a program to manage linux files on your windows desktop but that's a little bit of a hassle i would recommend just getting a usb stick plugging the steam deck into a dock and then plugging that Steam that USB stick into the dock and going from there. That's what I've done. So let's go ahead and take a look at our folders here. And you can see that the, the program is called Dolphin. This is our file manager. Uh, let's scroll down to new volume. And you can see I have all of my ROMs here. So I can go ahead and just grab this Game Boy ROMs. I'm going to control C. And then we're going to go over to where we're going to keep them. On my system, I'm putting them, putting them in documents. And I'm putting them in this ROMs folder. Now, this is on the internal storage, not on the SD card. Uh, the reason I'm doing that is some of the emulators have trouble discovering and recognizing the SD card as its own drive. Um, I'm not sure if that's a problem will be fixed. I would recommend for now installing most of your ROMs on the internal storage, though. Uh, that's just kind of like, that's a safety mechanism where if you put them in the internal storage, the, your emulator should be able to discover them. So I put them in documents and ROMs. If you want some emulators, want them in certain files set up in, within like the, the emulators folders, uh, but you, you should be able to point just about any emulator to a folder like this. And let's go take a look at that now. Let's start getting into some of these emulators, getting them set up. We're gonna keep doing this in desktop mode. It is the best thing you could do to make sure that these things are gonna work properly, at least for now. Let's start with Dolphin Emulator, which of course you could just open by going to start, going to games, finding it here, or just typing it in. This is a very powerful emulator. It is one of the most portable emulators in the world in terms of being able to work on any platform. It runs on Android, it's run on Linux for years. Um, it's, it's working very well on the Steam Deck, but you do want to have, like select a couple of options to make sure it's going to work very well. First of all, go to your options, or I'm sorry, go to config, go to paths, and this is where you'll want to add your folders where, you keep, where you're keeping your ROMs. Um, I've done that. You might want to select search subfolders if you have subfolders of your ROMs. Uh, this has been very handy. Now it's just populating in this field over here. Um, this is basic stuff for Dolphin, but I just want to go over some of it a little bit. Um, you might also need to set up your controllers and an important note here is, so make sure you look at device, see what you have selected and then select SDL. If you have SDL selected, you'll want to go through and set up all of the buttons. Make sure you have a, a good idea of what the GameCube controller looks like, and then just map everything correctly to the Steam Deck. You'll go through one by one, 
set these up you know for the d-pad you're going to press up when you click on this and and then and then it's for the up button uh, do that for everything make sure for the uh the control stick you're using the left analog the c stick you're using the right analog uh and then make sure you save it type a name in here something like deck deck two i'm going to save we're good to go a couple other things to take care of first let's go to graphics OpenGL seems to be working very well for Dolphin. You might want to try Vulkan, which is the other good option if you encounter any issues, but OpenGL has been working very well for me, so we're not going to mess with that too much. Uh, enhancements, I would suggest 720p. 2X native, 720p. This is uh, ideal since this is an 800p screen. Um, then you could set the anti-aliasing and anisotropic filtering uh, to a pretty low number. You don't need too much. We are going to go to audio. This is a big one. Audio won't work out of the box unless you select this first option, HLE recommended, which probably is highlighted, but then go to backend setting and then click on QBEB. And it's probably set to you for no audio output. And inst instead select QBEB, this should work just fine. And then you should be ready to go. Uh, this is a, 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 a you know, the. This is an emulator, it's early days. You're probably gonna have to tinker to get exactly what you want. But if you have those settings in general, it should work. Although we're going to encounter some flickering. Let's go take a look at that right now to see what I mean. So I'm using the right trackpad as a mouse. Uh, if that's something that's not immediately appearing for you, it should be, but you can always go to Steam and uh, hit the Steam button, I mean. When, you're, when you have Dolphin emulator highlighted, you press right, press right again. Because this gives you full control of your controller settings. We are going to mess around with this a little bit here in a second. Uh, shout out to Mosquito uh, in my Twitch chat for helping me figure some of this stuff out. Uh, we will be setting some of that up in a moment. But for now, let's get into Dolphin. Um, and let's pick a game. And just fair warning, there could be some flickering, could be some flashing. And if, that, if you are sensitive to that, please skip over the next 30 seconds or so. Uh, let's go ahead and start here with, uh, oh, let's do Mario Strikers. I want to do Mario Strikers. All right, so we only got a little bit of flashing there. Now, you might experience more flashing. Uh, what you're going to want to do is, anytime a dialog box appears, it's going to do that because a game scope, the thing that renders the games on SteamOS, struggles to render multiple windows at once, doesn't know what to select. So if you ever get an option to turn off those dialog boxes, or you get an option to say, uh, never show me this again, always select that, always always have that uh, as an option so that the, you get as few of those as possible. Now, uh, right now I'm, I'm pressing the a, a button and nothing is happening. This is something that could happen to you as well. Please keep this in mind. If that happens to you, try to move your mouse over the game, click on it, and now it will make that the active window basically, and it will be, begin responding. So make sure you have a mouse option, maybe just touch your touch screen. That should work as well. Nintendo. All right, so now we have Mario Strikers playing and we're gonna get in here and we're just, we're just gonna start. We're gonna start a grudge match. I'm gonna be Wario, of course. And I wanna face off against Daisy, of course. I think as you can see, it's working really well. Um, it, it, there's, I got the frame counter up there so you can kind of see how it's running. Again, we're on OpenGL. If you wanna experiment with Vulcan, I think it's totally a good idea. Vulcan works very well in RPCS3 with PlayStation 3 emulation. OpenGL much slower. So we are gonna go ahead and do this and you can see with a little bit of hitching, but overall this is running really well, right? Sorry, much. now I'm just gonna play the game. No, no. No! So let's say you want to rage quit and you don't, but you don't want to close Dolphin. Now you do have the option of going to the Dolphin emulator by hitting the, the Steam button, going to Dolphin emulator, hitting exit game. But that's not going to just exit out of the game. It's going to exit out of Dolphin completely. So what you can do is using the handy dandy Steam interface is set up a way of doing shortcuts on the Steam Deck itself. And so I'll show you how to do this, but look, I'm going to hit the escape button. This is, this is tied to an escape button press on a keyboard. Not like a real keyboard, but it's just like it's emulating that. So I'm gonna hit escape, and then it's saying, do you want to stop current emulation? I'm gonna go to return, and then there we go. Actually, that menu used to flash as well. 
So that's very nice. It doesn't do that anymore. I wonder if they're already updating Dolphin to run better for this for this system, which they might be. Um, okay, so then we're right, we're right back at Dolphin. So how do you set that up? All right, let's hit the Steam button. And you go up to Dolphin Emulator, make sure Dolphin Emulator is highlighted here on your menu. You go press right, and then press right again, and then here we are in controller settings. I hit controller settings, and now I'm gonna go to edit layout, and I'm gonna go down here to trackpads, something that is usually not used in most of these emulators. I am going to left trackpad behavior, and I've selected touch menu. You can see you have a bunch of options here. Potentially, you might wanna try radio menu. I'm using touch menu, it works better for me. Uh, but you could do hot bar menu. There's a whole bunch of options here. Then you go down to touch menu button one. You go up here. It's going to be like this. It's going to look, like, look like this. Go to the top. Go over. Go over. Select keyboard. This gives you a keyboard, and you're going to hit escape. Uh, let's say you wanted to. You needed to add something to like a D-pad, like a you know the the directional pad on a keyboard. Well, then you will go over to numpad, and look here's up and down on the directional pad. Here's home and if you need to add any of these buttons here are all the options to do so all right going to keyboard though and we're going to make sure that escape is selected do the same thing with the enter key and the space bar key if you need to for for dolphin i've mostly just needed escape and enter though so now we have that and we can get back into another game i'm going to select and again, I'm using the right trackpad as a mouse still. So uh, let's just go ahead and hop up here and select F0GX. I'm gonna hit play, and here we go. And again, very minimal flashing really does seem like maybe Dolphin and the Dolphin developers have begun to fix this, uh, which would just be fantastic. All right, so we are getting into the game. Again, it's not working, but I'm just gonna touch my screen. Now I'm at start, and now it's responding to my inputs. Let's just go to Grand Prix, novice. I'm a, I'm a games journalist, everybody. That's how it has to go sometime. Let's get in here real quick. And there we go. Here's F-Zero running at what looks like a pretty good, a pretty near 60 frames per second. Uh, you, of course, have options to mess around with the, uh, the, the settings and the specs and everything to try to get the most out of the system and uh, try to get the best performance. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, everything, you know, if you're running on battery, you'll want to keep an eye on that wattage. The best way to do that is, wasn't working in game for some reason there for a second, but uh, usually it has been. But if you want to see uh, your battery usage, uh, you can come over here uh, to the battery and check it out. Or you could also see it in game actively by turning on the performance overlay and setting it to level one. Um, maybe even, uh, maybe it was level two. This will give you, uh, you know, the wattage and percentage of, of battery life left and the, how long they, the game exp or the system expects the game to run, things like that. You could see uh, your wattage usage. Now you can usually use this with emulators to lock the frame rate to 30. Uh, if, if you really want to get extra battery life, that's a good way of doing it. Uh, and you're going to have to sacrifice frame rate, but if, if battery is what matters to you, um, that's what they do on the Switch. They just run a lot of games at 30 frames per second instead of 60. Um, this doesn't work though. I, I, this has not worked when I've been in, uh, in emulators. The thermal power limit, uh, that's uh, you know limiting the tdp uh, you could set this to like okay only only use 12 watts of power at the most uh in rpcs3 it was still using as much as 24 uh, watts a lot of the times very very thirsty for power here is rpcs3 you can see we got blood on the sand we got persona 5 uh a couple things you might want to do here first is go to the controller and from the handlers select ev dev that is going to be your Steam Deck. And the nice thing here is it automatically fills everything out. It just sort of associates everything correctly. Everything uh, seems to be working. Uh, I haven't had any issues. It seems like it properly associated each button with the correct thing. Uh, another thing you might want to do is, let's see here, go to configuration and go to GUI and check out your UI options. And uh, you might want to like uncheck show welcome screen, uncheck show exit game dialog turn off a lot of these dialog boxes because again if an app is trying to show multiple dialog boxes at once trying to show multiple windows it could cause some confusion in game scope so the fewer of those you enter uh, you uh, come across the better one important thing that i forgot you definitely need to install the firmware for the ps3 just go to google search playstation 3 firmware 
you're going to go to this official playstation.com site they are they just give this away this is not this is not piracy at all this is they just won't be able to people to be able to install playstation 3 firmwares as needed and that is helpful for the rpcsp3 whatever it is so you just click this you're going to download it save it wherever you're going to save it and then let's open the emulator and get it installed all right so we have we have the emulator open we've got rpcs3 whatever it is um so i'm, I'm just going to keep messing that up every time i say it uh let's see the, the ps3 emulator here you just go to file go down to install firmware and it should have you uh, go ahead and pick where you located it and it should all just install automatically. All right, so now we are in RPCS3 on game mode. And one thing you might wanna keep in mind is, is that you're probably gonna have to use the mouse to navigate. So I've set it up, remember, remember this? We're gonna go back here, go to your Steam button, then make sure you go uh, RPCS3, go over, go over. Now we're on controller settings. Go to edit layout, go down to trackpads, and let's turn that right trackpad into a mouse. Make sure you have it act as a mouse and have the right click, have that be your left mouse click. Whoop. There we go. All right. So now we can navigate through this interface, which is made for a mouse and keyboard. So let's go ahead and do it. Let's cho choose, uh, let's do persona. Now let's do 50 cent blood on the sand. I hit play. And we're probably gonna have to wait for a moment while it does its thing. Again, we got the flickering, so please, please close your eyes if you are sensitive to this. I will try to skip over it. Uh, also, it is gonna take a minute uh, because uh, you have to compile all this the shaders, I don't, whatever the hell it's doing over there. Sometimes I find that hitting the steam button kind of has it, it, it sort of fixes it, makes it stop. Like we just saw there, I hit the steam button and it's sort of lodged into place, so to speak. So here we are. This is 50 Cent Blood in the Sand for PlayStation 3 running on the Steam Deck. We can uh, wait for it to load up. Uh, but you can kind of see like uh, it's it's using 50% GPU, 81%, 100% GPU just here in the menus. I, this is pretty going to be pretty intense, but it's running just fine. 60 frames per second in the menus, but that 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 doesn't matter. Let's see how it runs inside the game itself. Let's go to new story. Go to easy because uh, I just want me and Tony Yeah out to, to murk some fools. I just want to jump and jump off a big ass ramp. That's the life I want to lead. There we go. And I think we've already seen a little bit of hitching, but you see 60 frames per second, 50 frames per second. This is pretty darn good to be running off a handheld computer. And uh, I am having, I do have a weird issue. Like this game specifically seems to have stick drift. <laughs> Uh, I haven't had stick drift with anything else. It's just this game. So there's something weird happening there. Uh, I'll see if I can fix that. But the game, the game is working otherwise. Um, you can see, see, uh, see his face. Absolutely. Uh, this looks uh, even better on a seven inch screen when it's not blown up all big. It looks great on a seven inch screen. Yeah. Go, Tony, like it's your birthday. Oh, I forgot the buttons. It's not R2, R1, or R, R2 and L2. It's L1 and R2, or an L, L1 and R1. Oh, oh, forced walking. You know what? We got to go over this room first. Get some ammo. Hey, man, check out that scaffolding. Sorry, that's my favorite line in any video game ever. Hey, yo, check out the scaffolding. Uh, this is the kind of thing you could expect out of a Steam Deck. This is a PS3 game running on what is essentially something that, that is about as powerful as a PS4. I think it's a little bit, I think it's a little bit misstated to say it's like, oh, it's like PS4 in terms of its hardware because you have that LPDDR5 RAM. You have a CPU that is way, way, way more modern than a PS4's Jaguar cores. Uh, this is a... Uh, and, and and that that gives it a little bit more room for, to maneuver than just saying it's as powerful as a PS4. Maybe on paper in terms of like the raw output that you can expect. Uh, but clearly we are getting pretty good performance. Now it, it is dropping here. 
uh, this is a, a scenario where they are putting a lot of geometry in place and they're getting ready to do a big explosion so that seem that seemingly looks like it's about to um uh cause a drop in the frame rate but I, i'll say uh, one thing you probably should do in this game especially when you're playing in hand handheld mode is drop the frame rate and actually lock it in at 30 because that'll save you some battery uh, our pcs3 is a battery hog it's using 24 watts a lot of times it is just intense on battery so one thing you could do there is uh just go ahead and limit the frame rate so uh let's let's do that real quick and you can see that that automatically limited it and uh, it's gonna be you know it's not gonna look as smooth or as great but if you're playing in handheld mode again you are playing a P an emulated ps3 game uh you, we kind of need to now, beggars can't be choosers right at a certain point if they were to port this game to the switch today it would probably run they'd probably have it run about 30 frames per second or at least that would be a, a compromise they would very likely make if they needed to and so if we're talking about like okay you you gotta you're in charge of this pc you get to make the choices yourself are you just gonna be like well no i want everything to just be um you know sunshines and rainbows what's well, that that's not realistic so you've got to make some sacrifices i think saying okay let's let some of these games run at 30 frames per second instead now we get a little bit better at battery life the game still runs really well and looks great uh another thing you could do is run these games at 540p instead that is another really good sacrifice because on a seven inch screen the difference between 540p and 720p is negligible it really is there is a difference it is noticeable but it's not much at all so here we are back in the graphics menu for our pcs3 uh default resolution 720p you probably just want to leave this there and if you want to lower the resolution go ahead and do resolution scale right here and i've been doing 75 percent 540p uh to me this is this works really well uh i think uh, you, it might even work with the integer scaling option uh and maybe not integer scaling but maybe like some of the, the linear scaling options that you have uh built into the steam deck so we'll give that a shot next um but this is this is especially important for Persona 5, which is what we're going to try at 720p, which is the uh, the, the option here if you're doing 100% scaling. Um, that's a bit too much for this hardware. 540p, though, it works really well. At least I found that this has been a very good option to get a much more solid frame rate. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. All right, here's, here's Persona 5. And I know I just said that you should run this at 540p, but I forgot that I think Persona 5 always ran at 30 frames per second, right? So I think if you lock it, if you limit it to 30 frames per second on here, you could probably run it at 720p native, no problem. I was trying to run it at 720p, and it was bouncing from like 30 to 40 frames per second. It was kind of uh, struggling a little bit, maybe getting up to 60 here and there. Uh, the game is not meant to run at 60, though. I mean, you can run it at 60, and maybe you can we can get a little bit better than that in this uh, in this version. Let's take a look. So coming off the train uh, see we're getting see, we get a locked 30 frames per second uh set to 540 with the 540p render resolution and again on a seven inch screen this is gonna look super crisp super clean i think a good example is something like the the wii u which had a pretty similar resolution not quite 720p um and uh, uh and i think maybe the uh the vita is another good example of that if you play in any games on the Vita or the Wii U, you kind of get an idea like, okay, those games can look super crisp. Like I played a lot of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe on uh, the Wii U and it always looked gorgeous to me. And I played it on the gamepad and that was not, that was like, you know, a six and a half inch screen at less, at sub 720p and it looked looked fantastic. All right, so you, you see here, we're running real well. Uh, the game is looking sharp and we're getting that solid uh, solid 30 frames per second once again. But let's go ahead. Let's see if we can take off the uh, the frame rate limiter. And see if we get anything higher. Now it looks like it's just going to keep running at 30 frames per second. So yeah, I think this is just kind of what the game is supposed to do. Um, I, I think this is this, this system is going to be great for games like this. And uh, the truth is, a lot of a a lot of PlayStation 3 games should run just fine. This is a later PlayStation 3 game. It was super well optimized for the PlayStation 3. So obviously, um, it, it's not, you know, it, not every game is going to run this well. Uh, but yeah, this is running great. It's totally playable. I mean, it's more than playable. It's, it's just fantastic. 
Okay, the last thing I wanted to check out is Duck Station. Um, I, I just want to bring this up because I think it's good to use this no GUI. Uh, Duck Station no GUI means it's going to kind of it's going to be better for controllers. Uh, also, it seems to D Duck Station QT uh, seems to crash a little bit more. So I, I use Duck Station no GUI and that's working great. Uh, if you need to get a BIOS, which you might need for Duck Station and you might not need for RetroArch, but if you do need it for Duck Station, just go to archive.org, Google it. It's one of the first things you'll find. All right, so I'm going to go to my game list, and I, mean, I got the only two games you ever need for a PlayStation, R4, Ridge Racer Type 4, and Star Wars Masters of Terrace Kazi. So uh, the good thing about Duck Station is it just loads the state for you automatically and it saves the state when you like leave a game. So it just picks up right where you left off. It's really nice. We're gonna play as whore. I love playing as whore. Uh, yeah, this, this game's not uh, exactly a thriller. But you see we're getting 60, 60 frames per second, of course. This is... um. This is good enough, definitely good enough hardware for a PlayStation 1 emulator, especially one as good as Duck Station, although we are waiting for uh, Duck Station to come back into development. That there was, you know, there's scene drama you always have to worry about. Oh my gosh, she just lit my stuff up. All right, well, as you can see, I'm getting beat up. All right, so we're going to escape, and then we're going to hit space to enter. See? So again, remember, you can always set these up by going to the Steam button and going over to the, to the controller settings. So... In any emulator where you need to use keyboard shortcuts, just use your trackpad instead. It's fantastic. It really is something you should not overlook as a way of making your life simpler. Um, let's see. Let's do. Let's yeah. Let's do Ridge Racer Type Four, and then we're gonna get out of here. Honestly, maybe we can just leave it here. This game sounds so good. It looks so good. This, these replays are so nice. Uh, Ridge Racer is fantastic. Um, so yeah, I am. Very impressed with the Steam Deck as an emulation device. You should definitely be uh, looking forward to you doing it yourself, like, getting one of these things, getting a hold of this. It's very simple to do. Just keep a few things in mind. Uh, there's going to be a lot of resources. There's resources now. There's going to be more soon as the Steam Deck gets into more people's hands. And this is day one. This is what it's like day one. Emulation is only going to get better. There is going to be a scene on the Steam Deck. People are going to be very much into, into these devices specifically for playing older games. Um, and that, that's going to go for that $400 model all the way up to the, the $650 model, whatever it is. Um, so uh, I, I'm happy to get in early, test some of this stuff out. And, and I'm really excited that it works so well right now. My, my, my guess here, though, is in a month, th three months, this is going to be a completely different thing where things are going to be operating so much smoother. They're going to be so much more easy to integrate. And I, I would imagine that these emulators are also going to get updated specifically with the Steam Deck in mind. The big thing I want is RPC uh, or RCP S3, the PS3 emulator. I really want that one to have like a, uh, a mobile mode enabled so that it knows it's running in handheld mode off of battery power and can maybe suck a little bit less juice make it a little bit easier to do that. Cause um, even when I was trying to like limit frame rate or limit TDP, like maybe just make it uh, work with the, the TDP limiter in the Steam Deck, that would be cool. Uh, but otherwise um, everything right now is, is working really, really incredibly well, considering that this is just kind of a weird computer that Valve, you know, they spent a lot of time and a lot of effort getting it working well, but it's, it's, it's surprising that it's working this, this well so fast. Okay, I'm Jeff Grubb. Thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back uh, with more soon, I'm sure. I'm going to be doing a lot more of this stuff, so keep an eye out for that. Until then, have a good one. Take care of yourself, and goodbye.